Go. All right. High spots and low shots. And you know what? I got to say, my low shot is Daniel Bryan. I mean, he held his own in that brawl with Reigns. You know, it's not that, but Roman Reigns cost him his matchup tonight. I mean, in a, in a game of one-upsmanship that these two have been having, you know, Reigns won his matchup tonight. Daniel Bryan can't say the same. He does go into fast lane with a loss no matter how you look at it. So I just felt compelled to give him my low shot this week. Yeah, I mean, I guess technically you could say that, but I don't know. I mean, I think my low shot is going to be Rusev because he made he was basically made to look human tonight. Yeah, he got the crap beat out of him. Um, Never see, a good thing. Yeah, Cena was in line. He said, you've never had your ass kicked until tonight, so way to, you know, kind of spoil that for the pay-per-view when, you know, that could be like, well, now that's the first time you've gotten your ass kicked, but nope. You know, that, that was the thing. But so. nope. Yeah, so I do agree with your assessment there. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna be a bit, I'm gonna be a bit different with my high spot. I guess I guess my high spot is Dean Ambrose because he got what he wanted. Oh, I mean, yeah. his whole his whole objective for that night was to get an Intercontinental Championship match at Fastlane, and by hook or crook, like we always say, and certainly by crook in more ways than one because he forged a man's signature, he got his title match. So, you know, for that, I would have to say that Dean Ambrose had a pretty great night, seeing as how he had an objective, he set out to achieve it, and he actually did. So, good job there, Dean. Uh, my high spot is actually going to be Bray Wyatt, because he lost me for a while, and now he's bringing me back with these promos, and whether it's against The Undertaker or against Randy Orton, he's going to have the most compelling storyline going into WrestleMania. So, big props to Bray Wyatt. And actually, I did want to talk about this. Dude, how cool would it be? If the Undertaker was the guy that they ended up going with and he can work in the ring at least one or two more times in his life and he ends up getting a sneak attack on Bray from wherever Bray is when he cuts these promos, like whatever dark, dingy area that he's cutting these promos from, what if he was in the middle of one and Taker jumped him from behind? That would be so cool. See, like, to your point... That's the Undertaker that I'd love to see a few more times where he rides off into the sunset yeah. because it's the remark I made last week with the Sting segment. The best part about the Undertaker, everybody says, oh, you know, Mark took this character and he ran with it and he made it great, and I agree. But I think what makes the Undertaker speaking solely for myself, and I know there are legions of Taker fans out there, so this is a, just one voice of many. It's a psychological character. It does psychological warfare better than anybody else. And I feel like we really haven't seen that facet of the undertaker i'm sure for many obvious reasons which i always do take into account but if we could see it just one more time this is the feud to do it either that it's or great because it's sort of the evolution of the undertaker character he went from a zombie right to a guy who acts like a zombie to get in his opponent's minds right yeah pretty much so it would be i i love that idea if he was just caught in the promo and you see like Taker's face all of a sudden illuminate, like pier uh, piercing the darkness, and then he just, you know, kind of lays him out. So that would be really cool. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's my high spot. Uh, Dean Ambrose, you said yours is Bray Wyatt. So there's that. We can now move on to Raw Request. Jeez, oh, I don't even know what I want for my Raw Request this week. Um, would you like for me to go first? Yeah, you might as well go first. I don't, I don't even really know what I want this week. <laughs> all right. Well, Next week's Raw is the first Raw leading up to WrestleMania. Right. So my Raw request is simple. I want you to establish at least three matches that are going to happen at WrestleMania set in stone on that show. All right. All right. Very interesting. Simple to the point, but hey... It'll be it'll go very far as far as building up uh, a big pay per view goes, and the, I mean here's the thing, John, there there used to be a six month period between Chamber and WrestleMania every year. There's only five this week or this month this year. Right. So it's it's a little bit less time, and I, I think they need to really kind of get on to building up the card. And I think that three matches is a, is a good start on a nine match card. I, I certainly agree with you. And while you were talking, it actually did help me come up with my request, so thank you for taking the ball first. Um, I think my request, I would like if next week 
maybe you had a little something set up for Seamus, like not even just a return date. I'm, I'm talking like maybe somebody says, like, I, I've seen these vignettes running and I know who you are, Seamus, but I'm not intimidated by you and since you've been gone, you know, I've come up, I've taken your spot or whatever, or I'll just take you out again or something like that. I don't know, I just don't want Seamus to, like, be thrown in this random fold. I don't know, end up doing the Under the Giant Memorial Battle Royal for WrestleMania. So if you're going to bring him back and you've got He's going to win vignettes, it. He's going to win the arm bar. You think so? No, I don't think so. I just just throwing it out there. Ah, uh, well, I mean, it is. Now you watch; it's going to freaking happen just because I brought it up and then rejected it. Yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, I mean, just have something maybe laid out for Sheamus. It's probably just going to be more vignettes. But you know, I don't want him to just return, squash some random guy, and then cut like a Fallout promo or something. Like I'm back. You want him to come back with a purpose? Price. Yeah, come back with a purpose, man. Uh, you know, I I think it would be different. And Maybe he comes certainly... back to screw Daniel Bryan out of his match with Reigns. Maybe. Hell, I'll take it. Just something different than, oh, look how healthy he looks, and oh, look how great he looked in this match, and then it's just, where do you go from here? So... The current sort of meta prediction is that they're going to just overbook that match all to hell. Like, they're going to have freaking J&J security try and help Rollins, and then they're going to get thrown out. And then Kane and Big Show are going to come out. And then Ryback and Rusev, or Ryback and Rowan and Ziggler are going to come out to help. And then Rollins is going to come out to try and uh, beat down, I don't even know who. And then Orton's going to show up and take Rollins out. And then Brian's going to win. So. Ah, uh, interesting. That's, that's the, just like the meta, like, what every internet mark on Reddit is hoping slash thinking will happen. I'm going to be honest. I don't know how I'm going to react, I, you know, because I know so many people, and I'm, I'm certainly not among them because I do think they could have a great match and, and maybe even have an interesting story with it. But they are just cringing at the possibility of a heel Sheamus versus a face Daniel Bryan for Mania. I don't know she- why. Those guys would tear the freaking house down. I was so disappointed that they got cut from the first WrestleMania they were supposed to wrestle at, and then they got, what, 17 seconds at the second one. Like, I genuinely want to see that freaking match get, like, 15 to 20 minutes. And I I don't think I've ever been able to actually see that. I mean, after the... uh, And you know, this was actually my match of the year that year. Their two out of three falls match at Extreme Rules, I want to say 2011, for the World Heavyweight title. I know that these guys can put on a clinic with each other and have a great matchup. You give them those 15 to 20 that you're asking for in Mania, you'll get a barn burner. So I don't know why everybody's got these reservations, especially when these guys really haven't gone out and had the WrestleMania match that you know these guys can have. Because, already... John, then Brian's not wrestling for the title in the main event, and that's all that matters. <sighs> of course it does. But I personally Dude, would be open to seeing it. crazy. I, I know. It's, it's driving a... me crazy, too. You know, it really Reddit is the worst about it, too. I, I can imagine, because you've told me in conversations how bad Reddit is with it. I mean, honestly, nothing against the Bryant fans, but it, it's getting to the point where I actually would welcome and maybe even pop for Seamus coming back and broke kicking Brian in the face. <laughs> um, but you know, It's so funny, because Seamus can never actually be the alignment he's supposed to be. Yeah, I know, right? But, I mean, if the rumors were true and he's supposed to come back as a heel, I, I so endorse that so much. So, we'll see. I am genuinely curious about Sheamus' return, and I think that's what kind of inspired my raw request. But now, to close this episode out, guys, you know what's coming. 30-second hot seat. I know Ashton has to like that. Brother, 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 brother. Yes, and I know Ashton likes to have a little fun at my expense some time with these. I mean, last week he got me to answer one that wasn't the actual one, and that, that really hurt me deeply emotionally. But this week, I am on my A-game. So, bring it on, man. Okay. Man, this is actually kind of difficult. Okay, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. Because we have Fastlane coming up, and we're going to do preview and predictions on Saturday, I don't want to actually do a 30-second hot seat based on Fastlane. So I am going to look slightly less into the future, a little bit more near future, and I'm going to have an NXT-based 30-second hot seat for you. How's that? Sounds great. We know that Solomon Crow is debuting on Wednesday, do we not? Yes, we do. So my question for you is, is he going to have a match to debut? If not, what will he do? And if so, who against? You have 30 seconds, and your time starts now. 
You know what? I'm going to make a weird prediction. I'm saying, yes, I think very clearly he is going to have a match. I do think that's the plan. I think, though, that he is going to have a match, and you're going to love this, against Ty Dillinger. I, I knew think. you were going to say that as yeah. soon as you said I was going to love it. Yeah, and I knew you knew it. So, yeah, I think Ty Dillinger is going to be his fodder, and, yeah, we'll see what Solomon Crow can do for his debut. All right. You did that in 25 seconds. You have five seconds to spare. So, hey, there you go, man. Good job. Uh, yeah, I'd use the five seconds for a Scott Steiner impersonation, but I don't know if I could actually pull it off tonight, so I'm going to... Do it! Man. The Big Dipper! Take your clothes off! I'm working off! He needs to be on NXT, like, now. I, I'd love it. <laughs> God, just imagine him doing an interview with Devin Taylor. <laughs> you know, hi, Neville! Hi, Scott! Um, well, we saw what you did out there, and we were just wondering what your thoughts were. Hey, honey, look, you're very beautiful, but I don't got time for this right now. Adrian Neville! <laughs> they say you're a shooting star, but I'm going to blow a load up your... Wait, what? What's going on? Edit that footage! Hey! Hey! Edit that footage! Adrian say... Neville! You know, you come out here talking about how you're the best, but at the end of the day, you got ears, make you look like an elf. You talk a little bit like an elf. And to be perfectly honest, you just kind of look like an elf. And I'm going to kick your ass! Sami Zayn, you're so worried about Kevin Owens. Don't worry about Kevin, because he's wrestling a box of Dunkin' Donuts. What makes me sick about you, Sami Zayn, is you're from that country I hate, Mexico North. <laughs> you want to talk about Kevin Owens? He's fat! <laughs> I don't think people understand how much you want a Scott Steiner Hall of Fame induction speech. Oh my you god, yes! <laughs> you think you don't want it. You really do. You you think you want that about as much as, well, I don't know, think of something bad and insert it there. It's your imagination. You do whatever the hell you want with it. But you want it. You know you do. I know I do. I just wanted oh. to come up here say that I'm very thankful to everyone that has helped me in my life. It's mostly just my brother's Rick. Rick, stand up. <laughs> but as for everyone else, I don't know. I, I got a problem with the fact that it's taken this long for me to get inducted into this thing. <laughs> you guys caught. You guys got a bunch of scrubs up in here, like Drew Carey, like like Lita, like Trish Stratus. You got women in your Hall of Fame before the big bad booty daddy. What a joke. I beat Triple H, I beat Sting, I beat everybody in here. I whip Hulk Hogan's fat ass. <laughs> He's fat! Oh He's fat! I can't, I can't even. <laughs> I, uh, no lie. No lie. And, and I know, because the same people that we've probably been so critical of, they're like, oh, you, you dump on all that, but you'd mark out for that. I'd probably pop if Scott Steiner came back to WWE under some kind of legend deal or something. I just, oh god, I love him so much. Scott Steiner versus RVD. <laughs> oh, do it. <laughs> do yeah, the yeah. promos. You know, who can get higher match? <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. Alright, well, before this turns into a whole nother episode to, uh, based entirely on Scott Steiner impersonations and stories, which I'm not entirely opposed to that idea, we just don't have time now. Uh, Cracker Barrel? Cracker Barrel, hey, oh, baby, you want to get with the real thing? <laughs> God, uh, Petey Pop, what the hell was that shit? I'm going down this one-way street, uh, Petey. <laughs> it's like, dude, the fuck's wrong with you? It's a red light. What the hell are you doing? It's like right there. It's like right there. <laughs> Petey, what gym you work at? <laughs> okay, before I die... I'm going to ask Ashton if he has anything else he wants to say about this Raw. And I swear to God, if you do it in Scott Steiner voice, I'm going to lose it. I don't know what we're going to do, so keep it together. No, I don't have anything else. Okay, okay. All right, well, with that said, Bad guys. Asses. God damn, I was about to close. We had it, man. We had it. Okay. So, Joe. Or no, no. Senior Joe! <laughs> Senior. Uh, Threat! Cuts his hair, paints his face. He thinks he's threatening me. I can't even do it. <laughs> thinks he's threatening me. He can do whatever he wants. He's still a fat bastard. <laughs> guys, 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 we have to cut. We have to cut. So yeah. listen. 
Oh my god. This has been raw. This has been twit. Well, I guess. I don't even know what the hell this is anymore. <laughs> but I do know that it is the best wrestling podcast made for wrestling fans by wrestling fans on the web today. I swear to God, I almost want to do that in Steiner voice. You started to. <laughs> I started to. I know I did. And I took myself out. I'm losing it over here because you totally did it there for a second. <laughs> I'm going to do it one week. You guys aren't going to know it, but one week I am going to do it, and I'm losing my shit over here, and I can't believe all this is going to make it to post-production. But anyway, I'm I'm John Steiner. That's Ashton Steiner, my cohort and commentary. And um, guys, be sure to comment and subscribe on YouTube. What do you think of our Steiner impersonation? Can you do a better one? Prove it. I, I, I don't know. They it's, probably it's, can. They probably can, but it's, it's not a peeing con. It totally is. Um, but, you know, it's not. Um, so you can talk about that. You know, what did you what did you think about this Raw? Um, did I'll, – I'll, I'll, here, here's this actual serious question for you. Did the Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns, Brawl to end the show, can you be counted among them that it built your anticipation for this matchup? Uh, that's what I would like to know. Take the discussion over to Puitoff, an amazing pro wrestling group, great guys all around there, and, um, I, I think I got it, my mind is so gone right now, but I, I think we will see you again, if I'm correct, for our Lucha Underground and NXT reviews. Lucha Underground, we're going to see more developments with Katrina, Phoenix, and Mil Muertes. Hopefully. And NXT, we're going to deal with all the fallout of Kevin Owens being the new NXT champion. And, of course, more Sasha. importantly, Sasha. the boss Sasha Banks' new NXT Women's Champion. I dig but it! Also, but also, yes. the debut of Solomon Crow. Yes, also the debut of Solomon Crow, which should be very interesting to see. Indeed. So, until then, guys... You know what to do. Work on those Steiner impressions. But more importantly than that, tune in and peace out.